Hello, let's talk about shaders, shall we? You want to create levels like this. Yes, you do. I do too. This is this is spectacular. Anyways, let's get into exactly what you can do with shader. I almost did that like classic YouTube. Anyways, let's get into it. You know, like, okay, good. People are telling me I should develop a parasocial relationship. So, you know, like, okay, here we are. I'm going to start with the best place to start, Moonview Highway. Why is it the best place to start? Because everything crashes on Moonview Highway. Excellent. So, what is the shader? Well, a shader, it's an equation. That's it. And a shader does math, and that's it. Uh, the trick is how do you how do you interpret this 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 shader equation? So we have zero. Okay. Well, what is this zero? That's actually our d over here. So let me just put this as something, and we'll we'll see we'll see this in the this in the background be changing up. Um, so we have our d plus one minus one. Well, okay, something's not right about that. This is our C. Oop, haha. Uh -huh. This is our C. One minus C. And there's a C times B term over here. Okay, we have something that and there's here's a zero. Well that doesn't seem like a zero. That doesn't seem helpful. So let's let's make that an A. And let's just ignore this for now. Here's our base equation. Excellent. What is it telling us? It is telling us that the output at so each stage takes in one texture. That, that comes from this sampler, okay? And uh, what we do is we say, well, one of these is going to be maybe our texture color. So let's call this our texture color, shall we? And now we see something, and what's happening? Well, we're taking our texture color, is our D, and then we're, multi we're adding this by whatever this is, which makes it slightly brighter. And so every pixel here just becomes ever so slightly brighter, cool. Now, let's figure out, this is a linear interpolation. So this is what uh, is known in the field as a LERP. Uh, and based on C, between A and B. So if uh, A was zero, which is the case very often, all then we get is just C times B. Plus, this is, this is our bias, essentially. And we can just say, no, I don't want any bias, any constant bias. So now we just have... Well, we just have C times B, which right now is our raster color times our raster alpha. And our raster alpha, in this case, is nothing more than just one. So essentially what we're getting is just B in this case. And you can work out through the steps of why this is, is we're doing a linear interpolation. Well, C is one. So that means we're only, we're not varying C by anything. C is constant and we're selecting the C times B term, and it happens that you know C is one, so we get B, and then we're not adding any bias. We could also increase the brightness at the end. That's our, that's our scale. We could also add additional bias, but this tends to really blow out um, what you want, and there's more subtle ways of doing that. So uh, essentially it's C times B, where our C is our texture color, and our B is our raster color, and multiply by 200% brightness, and that's how we get that's how we get something that that changes. Um, excellent, and you can see good old ReStudio rendering issues. So this is what our this is normally what our equation boils down to. Now I'm going to show you cases where we we change up some stuff. Cool. Except first thing I want to do is I want to talk about uh, or yeah before I get there is what is, well, our alpha stage, uh, is, well, for solid texture colors, we don't have to worry about this because our texture alpha is going to be uh, zero or one, I forget exactly which it is, but uh, whichever one makes that work. And then since there's no indirect stage, we don't have to worry about any of this. We'll look at that later. Cool. So uh, anyways, the thing that I did want to talk about was our calculation result gets piped to register zero. So I can add another stage. Cool, and I can set, set this to, actually, we're not going to reference this, this texture. All we're going to do is we're going to take the result, whatever we found here, we're piping that into register three, and now we're taking the input found in register three, and then we're piping it back out to register three. So we, this shader by default does nothing. The stage by default does nothing. 
Uh, we can also say, well, I want to pipe it to register zero, and then I want to take the result from uh, register zero, and maybe I want to make it brighter. So this is a, another way to do a multiply by, we can even say, well, instead of just doing our, this, this type of formula, our d plus zero, those zero out, we can do our b times c formula. So we can take the result from register zero color, multiply it by one half, and then eh, not add anything to it. And this is how you get a 1.5. Uh, right now we're not, yeah, the, well, now we're multi yeah we're we're multiplying by two and then uh, yeah uh, multiplying by half so we're we're not actually getting any any additional information out of this uh, I mean here's a way to divide by two um, which isn't super useful but uh, yeah that sh that shows you how we can pipe from from yeah two registers two different color registers and then ultimately. The end result has to be register zero, register three, which is our output color. You can also find the colors in here, which will be overwritten. I uh, sorry. The, yeah, the, they'll be temporarily overwritten, but you can always just say like, "Hey, let's make register color to this bright red, and then let's go to, back to our stage, and then let's actually multiply by our register two color." And now everything has a, a red hue. Let me make this times two brightness so we can see. Uh, and why is that not liking us? Oh, is it because it's doing the funny thing again? It might try. So uh, this, I'm gonna check. Is it, yeah, it's being funny again. Okay, so there's a ReStudio bug right now um, off by one error where this register is two color is actually referencing register three color, um, color register three. Cool, um, but yeah, that, that turns red. Excellent. So now we are going to look at, uh, maybe let's look at the projection map. So how does, how is, this is why I'm choosing um, Moon View Highway in particular is this is this is a cool thing you can do with shaders is a projection map and layer on top. Excellent. So this is the road, and let's look at the uh, stage setup. So we can see our sampler. This is our texture, and we can see that it's you know we can change around the the scale and what have you. Uh, we can also say you you can see here here's our uh, what do you call it the yeah, mask the light that turns on, and right now it's projection mapping, and that's how we get not based on your texture, but based on your where your camera is and where it's facing. You can also try out stuff like environment mapping, which is how you do metallic reflections. Anyways, so we go to our stage, and we say, what is it doing? Well, it is taking start at stage zero, and it's multiplying C times B. Okay, our B is our texture color, that is just our mask, and our C is our register zero color, which actually should be a register one color because this is this value of brown. You can see if I change it around here, we get we get a different, like that looks cool, that looks cool. Okay, no it doesn't, it looks horrible. But uh, yeah, so it's multiplying, the, yeah, the texture color, register zero color, no bias typing it to register three. This is taking the result of register three, putting it in D, and then we're adding to it this texture color times this raster color. So let me turn off the mask over top of it. So now you can see here's just our default, um, whatchamacallit, uh, here's our default road. And we can say, well, what if I just wanna see the vertex colors on top of the road? Well, then it's, we're multiplying our raster color by our texture color. So if we set this to one, then we're just going to get our raster color. And so this is how we see just the vertex colors. This is the calculation that Noclip is doing uh, when you just want to see the yeah vertex colors. Uh, likewise, you can also say, I want the texture color, but without the raster color. And you can see it's a lot brighter. And so what Nintendo does is they take like a gray vertex color everywhere and then multiply the result by two is what they end up doing. 
Excellent. So that is how you do projection mapping and how you do some masking stuff. Uh, the one thing that I, and you can see, this is the, this is how it looks like on the buildings there. Um, I think that's all I wanted to touch on on this particular stage. Let me show you some of how that looks in uh, Brawl Crate. Is this, here we go. So just to show you what corresponds to what. So we have this road material and let me make this more full screen. Wow, that got bright really fast. Okay, um, so we say, well, here's our road. What do we need to change? Aha, active shader stages. That looks that looks like something. Indirect stages, well, we're not doing anything indirect, so that's gonna be at zero. What does our shader stage correspond to? That corresponds to our two stages that we have here. Likewise, our stages that we have here. And we say, okay, well, what else? What else? Aha, here's our this, here's the linked shader to this material. Excellent. And here we say, well, this is our this is our color. So this is why there's gotcha. So color register zero, one, two, three. This is actually going to be the whoop, where'd it go? Down here. Um, here's our value that's currently this value of orange, but we can make it very bright orange in order to have this this value here. This is the same shader color. Excellent. And our shader constant color block, which I failed to mention, this uh, is only, you can only select one of these and these cannot be modified via, you know, these can be modified via CRL0. I always forget the name of that, but the animated color thingy, Bob, uh, these cannot be animated. They're just colors that exist that you can splash in. Say you have like a shadow map. Uh, which we'll get to, and you want to just slightly tint the shadow map a certain color. Well, instead of editing the actual texture, you can just multiply it by some color here, and it will do that. Excellent. So I think that's all the things there. Well, I guess I'll just show you projection mapping. Uh, what do you want to do? You want to set these to clamp because you don't really want this repeating forever on both sides. Uh, this doesn't have, uh, let's see, and the projection you have to have STQ instead of just ST, and ABC1 instead of AB11. And the main thing, uh, instead of your texture coordinates that you want to reference, you can reference the actual geometry of the material. And that's how you do with projection mapping. Oh, and map mode, projection. Uh, and that's, that's it for, and well, yeah. It doesn't have a texture matrix if you were doing um, no, it, gotcha, it does, you can modify, gotcha, okay. So uh, I bet you there's, I bet you you can take the, so basically the matrix, what it does, and eh, maybe this is too technical, but I'm still gonna mention it because it's fun. Uh, matrix, uh, there's a camera matrix, and this is what the map mode projection is using. That's using, you're, you know, you're the camera, you're looking at the scene. Well, let's take the scene coordinates and transform them into the camera space coordinates. And there's a matrix that does that. And you can also say, well, actually, I wanna add an additional matrix on top of just, here's some texture coordinates, but let's start transforming those and get it into a different worldview, maybe. Anyways, that is by the by. So let's look at the shader. What is the shader doing? The shader says, yes, I wanna take two textures. That's going to be our road and our light mask. Uh, and we're gonna say our swap mode table, you don't need to worry about this, but what it is, is if we look in our uh, swizzling, this is our swap zero. So red maps to red, green maps to green, alpha maps to alpha, etc. If you did just want a grayscale value, you could say only take the red stuff, and then uh, uh, you can uh, in here, uh, in our road material, and it might be in here, we can say, Actually, I want to, where is it? Where is it? Swap, swap. Ah, it's somewhere. It's not, you, you'll never actually ever use it. So, oh, it's in here, gotcha. Texture swap, so we say our swap zero is, is our no swap. Uh, our swap one would make the red component be the red and green and blue components as well, um, which, we don't want or care about, but 
that's something you can do. Excellent. So a shader, uh, text map seven, uh, we're saying no, no, no texture coordinates, no texture maps. Okay, cool. And now we're actually getting to the meat and bones of what's going on. So our first stage takes the texture map one. Why texture map one? Because it's the second thing here, zero indexed. Um, so we're starting with our light mask and our the uh, cord texture coordinates that the light mask is using, which is a projection. And then we're saying, excuse me, we're saying, here's where we get our constant color selection. This is, uh, yeah, this is a tint that's applied. Um, and we want a uh, constant color zero. So this specifies which, uh, which value we're using. And then we're taking our B times C. So that's our color zero, which our color zero is defined up uh, in, uh, where's our color zero defined? In the actual material itself. And this is where we're actually looking at the color zero. So this is in fact what's getting multiplied by by the by the texture color. So we take our texture color and then we multiply it by our color zero. And then we do have an A value, but which is yeah, just just some background color. It might even be black, not sure. Actually let's look. Constant color selection is zero. And in our material, and it's basically black. So it's just a small amount of color to make the blacks not entirely black. Okay, so this is the linear interpolation coming into play, uh, but not really. Basically, it's it, it either, yeah, it's basically B times C, but there's a small contribution of A. Excellent. And there's, yeah, there's no need to add by anything. And then here's our scale multiplied by one. Here's the clamp overflow type thing, which you can have. Uh, alpha we don't care about, and indirect texturing we're not doing anything about, so we don't care about that. So, and then this gets mapped to register three, which is also called output color, and then we take the result from output color, we multiply it by raster, we, so we take that output color, we add the result of our vertex colors times our texture colors, which was just, just what we had here. Um, without the actual projection. So we start with the projection and then we add on the result, um, yeah, of the vertex colors times the, times the, whatchamacallit, road texture. Excellent. So that is what what it looks like in Brawl Crate and ReStudio. And now let's go on to another effect. So we looked at how to do, that's basically how to do shaders. So some other stuff we can do with shaders includes, uh, includes, yeah, let's do the masking from, from my track. So the next thing we're gonna look at, oh, we're looking at PowerShell, you're looking at Amazon thing, uh, and now you are looking at uh, Cosmic Grove. So this is a work in progress track that I have. Um, currently the UVs are corrupted in Blender somehow. Um, it looks correct in Blender. Uh, one thing that I haven't mentioned that I will mention is you can have multiple UV masks. So that's how UV maps. So that's how you say our TextNet coordinate zero, one, two, three. This is where it's finding them. Excellent. So going back to here, we have this transition between road and ice, perfectly smooth. There's no uh, line that you can see. And what's happening here is I have a mask texture. So let's let's yeah. Let me show you what's what's happening in Blender. So uh, here it is set up and right now we're looking at this road texture and this is our ice texture that currently we're looking at a light map, but we can also, if you do control shift click, this is an easy way to do viewer stuff if you have node wrangler add-on installed. So this is the ice and here's the same ice and you can see it's perfectly seamless. And now we want to transition to this road using this mask. Aha, uh -huh. so this is where I set up my own UV map and then I can say black means a value of zero and white means a value of all one and there's some gray so there is some transition effect and you can see I fade this out at the very end. So you're going to get a smooth gradient between yeah, ice and not ice. 
So, uh, and the other thing that I have applied on top is a light map. So I have all of these things and I want to join them together into one, into one uh, road material here. So I have different UV maps for each and then in my shader setup, let's let's look at that. Uh, where is it? Yeah, this one. Excellent. So this is our ice. Um, yeah, it's slightly different. So I, anyways, not not worth going into the details. I, uh, so yeah, we we first say he, we, here we have an ice material for shader stages, referencing shader six here, and um, I think that's the only thing of value. Yeah, I have these set as uh, different, but they're not matter that they don't matter. They're not used. Excellent. So we start. We start actually with the mask. So this mask says we want. Basically, it's just yeah. Here's the mask. Okay, cool. And it's at value zero one two. So our first stage references texture map two and texture coordinates two, which is the masks texture coordinates here not you know this is light map coordinates here's the ca cave ice coordinates here's here's our mask coordinates so we have the map and we don't want to swap and we just say I want selection D and if you remember the formula so here it is D plus the linear interpolation between A and B and essentially A and B are both zero so that's going to cancel out to zero. So then we're just left with D, which is our texture coordinate, texture color. So we just have the mask now, which is zero or one. We multiply by zero, multiply by one, and we pipe this to color zero. So now this stage comes in with its own texture. It takes the result of color zero, and it, it's now referencing texture map one and texture coordinates, or texture map zero, texture coordinate zero, which is our road, um, as this is the zeroth item here. Excellent. I'm saying excellent a lot, aren't I? Um, and then we, uh, we say, okay, well, we have our, we have our color zero, which is our mask. Remember, this is our color register zero. And we're now multiplying it by texture color. So we're saying a, which is our texture color, this, uh, this road, this road times uh, our one minus C, one minus color zero. Why am I doing this? Well, I set up my mask bl black and white, but actually I want white to currently, my, my inside value part to be all the road. So I want the inside part to be all white and I want this edge to be all black. And so if I do one minus this texture, I'm going to get this inverted white in the middle and black on the sides. And then I'm going to multiply that by my texture color. And so I'm going to have just a value of, yeah, just the road texture in the areas that I've demarcated. And then I pipe this to color one. Excellent. Color one now takes our, my ice, which is at you know, the third, third map, and it multiplies this color, the ice, times the mask where the mask is currently white on the outside and black on the inside. So it, the only thing that it's getting from here is this white value on the edge here. And so that's going to be the ice. And then we're simply adding the, the previous result that we got here, which was the just the road part plus black on the outside. And so when you're adding the black on the outside, that doesn't change anything. And yeah, this is this is how you get the combination of the two added together. And then we pipe this to color two, and all we're simply doing at the very end is multiplying by a light map texture and multiplying by two. And our light map texture is this. This has texture coordinates. And so that's all light mapping is, is defining another texture uh, multiplying it by the base texture and then a, a value of white on here corresponds to a value of one uh, but typically you multiply it by two at the very end and so a value of gray then will get mapped to yeah no change in the original original texture uh, 
yeah, and that's that is that is light mapping, right there, uh, and that is also how you do very, um, yeah, very sharp masking and blending between two, between two. Um, so let me let me see. Yeah, I didn't use I didn't use any of that, um, and uh, hmm, if I was better, I'd have a version without uh, without this, but I don't want to. Um, fiddle around with this because corrupted UVs and, um, but that's, that's what it's doing. Um, and one thing, uh, for Brawl Crate, if you're making shader stuff in Brawl Crate, well, shader stuff in Brawl Crate can, can corrupt, so be careful. The other thing to look at, coordinates. This is how you change the texture coordinates. You're also, you're also thinking, well, hey, this is the second thing of UV coordinates and you can see different stuff here. Let me just choose, you know, let me choose this and move on with my life. Well, it doesn't change because you didn't actually change it up there. So you just changed it in the viewer, which is, uh, yeah, pro <laughs> something that I have lost uh, a, a hair cell to. Hair, hair cell, yes, they, they do have cells, right? Probably. Uh, and then the stage three, sorry, well, goes to output color. Excellent. So that is how you transition uh, nicely between two, uh, between two textures. And now let's look at some more advanced stuff. Um, not more advanced stuff. Uh, let's actually get to some of the stuff that we skipped over. Um, namely, indirect. Indirect and warping. So, uh, yeah. Here's water. Uh, and so here's something that you also want to watch as well. This talks about displacement maps, and this will be in the description. And uh, it's actually really, really good um, to describe what's what's going on in these effects. So. One thing to note, uh, just in just in general, look at look at this. This is the course. This is what it looks like without vertex colors. This is what it looks like with vertex colors. Vertex colors are powerful. Yeah. Okay. I think that's I think that's <laughs> I think that's all I wanted to say on that. Anyways, let's look at what this course is doing in here. So, some things uh, we have. Yeah, let's maybe look at the, maybe look at the rock. So this rock right now has a rock, okay? And it has some sort of wave material, okay? And uh, let's look at the shader for this. So this shader is looking at shader four. Now, the biggest thing, there's an indirect shader stage. Okay, well, we have stuff going on, right? So we look at shader four and you're like, wait, hang on a second. Why is there only one stage? I thought this said we had one stage. The rock material had, oh, I should I should do this. Uh, I thought this said we had one stage and an indirect shader stage. Well, the indirect, you can bundle it with the main shader stage. Okay, cool. So this shader stage says we want to take two texture references. That's going to be a rock and our indirect map. And then we're going to say, now I want my texture sources to reference this this indirect map. So that's where it's now going to take, aha, we have, you know, we have some indirect stuff happening. Okay. And then we take our shader, uh, right now takes our texture colors, multiplies it by vertex colors, the same thing that we found. It doesn't do anything else to it, it just pipes it to output color. However, the other trick that we do to let this work is we set the bias to STU and we set the matrix to matrix zero. And there's uh, other things, but I don't know how the other things work. Anyways, there's an indirect map. Uh, and that's that's it. That's, that's all you do for indirect maps. Um, obviously, the trick is, if it doesn't work, find a course that does work and see, you know, copy over the settings. Um, and so, yeah, basically, oh, I should show you what the effect is doing. This is what the effect's doing is taking, and there's, there's, it's animated as well. So, uh, we say this, uh, EF wave indirect map is being animated down here in our rock and is taking this indirect map, this texture one, and it's, you know, it's scrolling diagonally. And this is how it's, this is how it's pushing and pulling each of the yeah, each of the things. So this caustic, 
um, is a very similar thing. Uh, Zashi decided to take the caustics and move them to their own um, material so that it's less computationally expensive. And essentially all you have is just this scrolling along. Uh, we can see the caustics. The first texture is the one that's moving around. And the second one is just in place. It, it's not moving around. It's not being displaced. Uh, but it is, if we look at the shader, shader three, shader three, uh, it is still indirect, indirect mapping. Um, yeah. And so that's how you get indirect mapping on, on these caustics. Oh, that's a, that's a texturing. Oh my goodness. I can't believe this. Would you look at the, would you look at the seam right here? Oh, oh no. Okay. Um, yeah. And so that's how you do indirect mapping. Excellent. Uh, likewise, this, uh, this is the same, this is, you know, replicating coral and it's the same effect that you might recognize from, well, it's similar to an effect that you might recognize from Jungle Jamble. Uh, this is one way to do grass. And uh, the, blah, 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 blah. in, uh, actually the amusing thing is that this is found in, this is set as a different object. This is set as a sun.brus. Um, and so the reason why it's sun is because it has a very large draw distance, but you can see that there's some indirect mapping on this coral. And yeah, just uh, on the actual texture itself is being warped around. Um, cool. So I think we've covered indirect uh, mapping. We've covered uh, this water. I'm sorry, I will have to leave you to the actual video because it describes it better than I can. Uh, we've covered how the shader equation works, uh, the D plus the linear interpolation of, of, between A and B um, based on C, and we've covered vertex colors, and we've covered how to do shade, uh, shader stages and pipe from one thing to another thing, and we've shown how to do masking effects as, as shown in here. Um, or a very harsh mapping effect. We've shown how to do light map stuff, which is a application that's used all the time in. And uh, yeah, I think that I think that about wraps up what I want to say. And uh, apologies for the length, as always. Um, and yeah, I hope this is of of use to some people. Excellent.